So I have two kids, and before they were born, we decided to wait to find out the gender. And leading up to the birth, I was totally focused on just one thing. Were we going to have a boy or a girl? But the second each of them were born, my focus totally shifted. The only thing I cared about is, is this baby breathing? At the moment of birth, everything is irrelevant, except that first breath. And it wasn't until we knew the baby was alive and breathing that we registered that we had a beautiful baby girl. Not long before this, I served as a chaplain in a hospital. And I remember helping a family say goodbye to their mother who was dying. And they gathered around the bed and they laid their hands on her. And we watched as her chest rose and fell and rose and fell and eventually rose and fell, but didn't rise again. And that was the moment of death. So between the first inhale and the last exhale is a strange and beautiful, mysterious thing called existence. So I want you to consider a number. 25,550. That's the number. That's how much we get. The average lifespan is 70 years. 70 times 365 is 25,550 days. And it's not much when you think about it. If that were money, it might get you an average car, possibly a down payment on a small home. Could pay for one year of private college education. If that's your annual salary, it's pretty close to minimum wage. So not much. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but many of those days are already gone. It's awareness of this reality that is at the heart of the fundamental human questions. Why am I here? What is the meaning of my life? Is this all there is? What happens when it's over? It's the thing that makes us different from the dolphins and donkeys. We're actually conscious of the fact that we're alive and one day we know we will return to the dust. This fact drives so many of the decisions we make in life, even if they're unconscious. It's also the thing that gave birth to pretty much every major religion. Each one promises to solve the crisis of meaning and the problem of death. So Christianity teaches that Jesus came to solve these problems. He came to offer us salvation. And it's a word that gets used most often to describe what we get when we die. So if we believe in Jesus, he will save us from hell and give us eternal life. What's interesting, though, is that whenever Jesus talked about eternal life or the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, which he talked about a lot, he used the present tense, not future tense. So, for example, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He didn't say the kingdom of heaven will be at hand. In the same way, he said the kingdom of God is within you. I went to a restaurant in another country once, and I didn't speak the language and couldn't really read the menu. So in broken English, the waiter uh, tried to explain these dishes to me and my friends. And he told us about this incredible six course meal, everything built to this epic final dish. And what I understood of it all sounded delicious, especially the last dish. So as he brought out each course, I ate like small amounts so that I could save up for the final dish. And as we got closer, I decide that I'm gonna skip one of the dishes that didn't look that interesting so that I could leave room for the last one. And after that dish, the waiter clears the table and he brings the check. <laughs> it turns out I had lost count, didn't realize that the one dish I had skipped was actually the final one I was waiting for, the one I most wanted to try. What I thought was the appetizer was actually the entree. In some ways, I think this is what happens when we think salvation is only something we get when we die. See, then we separate this life from the next life. We assume that it's all about the next life, and this life is just a prelude. But what if this life that we get now is meant to be the entree, not the appetizer? <laughs>